Welcome back. Today we're going to make corn cob jelly. And it is a recipe that I got from the National Center for Home Food Preservation. I always like to put my rest take my recipes up here when I'm making them. So it is a safe recipe to use. If you're new to canning, make sure you go to this website. I will link it in the description box below. It's a wealth of information on canning and really good recipes. So this is called corn cop jelly. It's a delicious sweet jelly that you can use on biscuits, on cornbread, over pancakes. But basically you just take um, your corn cobs after you have removed the corn, and this is when I put up sweet corn um, several weeks ago, and I'll leave that video linked below. And I just put it in the freezer. So now I'm, I've got time, I can go ahead and make these um, into corn cob jelly. So you just need corn cobs, about 10 to 12, you need some sure gel, fruit pectin, you need sugar, you need a large pot to cook your corn in. It's going to um, boil a slow boil for about 35 minutes and then we're gonna take the liquid off of this corn to make our jelly. You're gonna need about four to five half pint jelly jars and make sure that you wash them good and that you have them sitting in hot water. So it's a very easy jelly to make. It's a good way to use up, you know, all your scrap corn on the cob and just make a delicious jelly. So let's get started. First step, I'm gonna get some water in here and we're gonna start boiling this corn. Okay, I've got my frozen corn cobs in a big pot of water and there's enough water to cover it I'm gonna bring it up to a boil and then I'm gonna boil it for probably 35 to 40 minutes. <clears throat> okay, after 35 minutes, I'm gonna take the corn out and we're going to strain off the pulp in just a moment. But right now, I'm just getting all the corn cobs out of that wonderful juice. Okay, this recipe calls for three cups of the corn water so I'm gonna carefully measure out three cups. And there was enough water left over that I could have made a second batch, but I recommend you only make one batch at a time. Okay, now that I've measured out three cups, I'm just gonna pour this through a strainer, a fine strainer. You could pour it through cheesecloth, um, but this works fine for me. It does get all those little bits of corn pieces out and then I've got just a nice clear liquid. Now into a bigger pot, I'm pouring in the three cups of strained corn juice, and I'm gonna add in one pack of the um, pectin, and give that a good stir and get that good and dissolved, and I've got my heat set, and I'm gonna bring this to a boil. Now I also have three cups of sugar already measured out sitting by the stove and then once this comes to a boil, you um, pour in your sugar. Okay, now that you've brought it back to a boil, you add in the three cups of sugar all at once and then give it a good stir. And you do want a pot big enough because this is going to bubble up rather high. You want a pot deep enough that it won't boil over. So tr tr make sure you use a big pot when making your jams or jellies. So once this returns to a boil, I set my timer for five minutes and then a stirring occasionally and watching it and make sure it doesn't boil over. Boil it for five minutes. Okay, we're at the end of five minutes and I've cut off the stove and you can see what I'm talking about, it really kind of foams up and can spill over very quickly, so you really need to watch it. And so over on the other counter now, I have my jars in the water bath counter. Um, they're very hot, the water's been boiling, and I'm just gonna take those out in one at a time, just fill the jar. You've seen me do this in other recipes with jams and things that I um, water bath can. It's such an easy process, perfect for beginners. Okay, I'm just gonna take the hot liquid 
and it is in liquid form now. It will set up to a jam consistency as soon as it cools. And I'm going to fill up each half pint jar. Same steps as before. You leave about an inch head space and then you debubble and then you wipe your rim good with the paper towel and then put on your lid and ring. jars are done you put them back in your water bath canner and you're going to process these at a nice bowl for five minutes after the five minutes you take the jelly out set it on a cloth on the counter and just wait and listen for those seals such an easy process and perfect for beginner canners Give this a try. This is the jar, it didn't quite fill up, so I put it right in the refrigerator. And it is like a jelly consistency. I'm just gonna spread it on my toast. This would be good on um, baked cornbread or Johnny cake or pancakes. Uh, let's give it a taste. Oh, that's good. Mmm, that is really good. It tastes like corn. It tastes like sweet corn. Mmm. Oh, this would be really good on some baked cornbread. What a great, mmm. What a great recipe this is. You're not wasting anything. You're not having to buy anything extra. And these are going to the chickens. It feels really good. It tastes just like sweet corn, but real sweet. It's very good. And I think if you wanted a corn syrup, you could heat this up and get it to liquefy again. And it should be perfect for corn syrup, but I'm telling you what, that is going to be so good on some baked cornbread. That is really good. So I hope you'll give this one a try. Mm -mm, it's good. Corn cob jelly. Who would have thought? Mm, good. Let me know if you make some and what you think. Oh, that's really good. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to give me a like and subscribe. And have a blessed day, friends. Thank you. Thank you.